so uh, we are back at uh, Night Hacking, so welcome. Uh, my name is Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I have uh, Richard, Richard Warburton. Did I say that right? Yes, yes. Good. You're doing <laughs> That's a good start. You're doing a great job. Name, names are really hard to pronounce if they're not your, your uh, first language. That's always something that, that, that's uh, an interesting experience whenever you're, you're traveling around or yes. meeting people from different countries. Absolutely. So you had, um, so you ha you're really an expert in what, Java 8 and also Lambda's collections. You had a session uh, yesterday? Or I've got a session before? tomorrow. Oh, you got a session tomorrow. Uh, yeah, on collections with my, with my okay. colleague Raul. And yeah, yeah, we're talking about some interesting stuff there. So Java developers are fairly familiar with collections. They've been using them for a while. Um, but there's lots of kind of new ideas and things on the horizon. So for a start, you know, the Java 8 language feature changes also kicked off a load of API changes that let people write kind of collections code in a uh, less error prone way. But there's also kind of big picture ideas like, um, you know, a lot of things coming from functional programming around persistent immutable collections and things like that. And it's one of these things where now people are over, kind of getting over the hump of Java 8 of learning the basics. One of the more interesting topics on that space that they can bring in and, you know, um, as we say, immutable persistent collections are one of the things that's, that's a real benefit. So we're looking at some of the different implementation characteristics. Because a lot of the reason why people don't use those kind of things historically is they think that they're really slow. But actually be, there's been loads and loads of really interesting both research work and also things that you can bring in from other programming languages communities, some of them on the JVM, like Scala and Clojure and things, about really efficient implementations of immutable collections, which make them a lot more practical for you. So you get both the kind of safety benefits from the immutability and also the performance benefit. Also some performance that's not, not as bad as it used to be, I should say. Good. So, so the collections, as you said, uh, go with uh, go along with the programming um, uh, parallel programming changes, right? Y yeah, I mean, uh, definitely the ability to have uh, hand out uh, references to immutable data in a, mm -hmm. a safe way between threads is a motivating feature for people to use those kind of collections. So, does it affect? And, and do you talk also about uh, in other sessions about reactive programming. I'm not talking about that at DevOps, but no, we definitely right. do do some interesting stuff on kind of reactive programming and asynchronous I.O. My colleague Raul and I, we run training courses as well mm. through a company okay. called Iterator Learning. Okay. And uh, one of the ones we've been talking about recently is a reactive and asynchronous programming course, which is... It's a big topic or a big... Um, it is. It's the thing that's really interesting is, you know, a lot of people are beginning to kind of move to more kind of microservice architectures okay. or just plain kind of service-oriented architecture. And when they do that kind of move, they're in a position where they make lots of network communication calls to other services that are independent. And if you're doing that, and you use kind of a synchronous blocking I.O. model, and you get some other external service that's slow, it can start to slow down that dependent service. It can start to eat up the threads in your thread pool where you can take out whole downstream services mm -hmm. uh, when you get some upstream service that's having a problem. So as a result, Asynchronous I.O. is really a much neater programming model for these kind of problems. But at the same time, people really hate the programming style they get with asynchronous I.O. So there's some really good features in Java 8, like completable futures that help you kind of manage the state going between these things. But there's also a load of other kind of programming models there, like actors, um, reactive streams and things like that, which are things which you can do relatively elegantly or kind of relatively OK in Java as of Java 8 which, again, help you solve this problem of not eating your kind of thread pool up, not uh, being a bit more resilient to failure and things like that. And, um, so you, you're really talking about streams, so reactive with stream. Yeah, that kind of, right. that's a whole other area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's an exciting topic, and there's all sorts of interesting things around, you know, which I think kind of developer communities are beginning to learn and being to build up that body of knowledge about, you know, the Java 8 streams are great for... Um, bulk collection processing type problems, but there are other APIs that people are beginning to, s to spin up outside of Oracle that build on that work and, and uh, better for solving other different areas, like things like Rx Java. Very interesting. So, uh, if somebody wanted to learn more about the whole subject, I mean, do you have um, 
maybe resources that or where they can find it more information or how would you go about it like i mean if just assume somebody is um is still like dealing with uh, java 7 and they don't really know i mean they've heard all all those terms but they're not too sure so i mean there's so for for if you're just on java 7 i think i'd, I'd focus on learning the, the basics of mm -hmm. core java right yeah. first before jumping into any of the reactive streams or competable feature stuff um I'm, you know, definitely obliged to point out I wrote a book on Java 8 as a ah, topic. Absolutely. So, yeah. so that's, a, that's a great place for people to start. Yeah. Obviously, um, there were plenty of other books which were written on that, same, on that same Java version. A lot of them are very good. So I don't want to badmouth anyone else's book or anything. I, I hear good things about lots of these things. And, um, yeah, I also run through iteratorlearning.com some training courses on that topic as well. But so you, you do recommend a course? It's yeah, it's I think it I think it does help people, right. but it's not like I can't really c come in and claim just go on a training course it'll solve all your problems. You really okay. need to play around and experiment and learn mm. in your own time mm. as well to to really get the hang of things. I feel as right, of course. So you also involved uh, with uh, different open source projects, right? Yes. Well, so I I do I involve myself in a couple of things. So I. When I get time, which is not recently, um, I uh, try and maintain a, a little o uh, an open source profiling project as well, which is on GitHub called Honest Profiler, which is used by quite a few people. It's been, it's even been, I think it's even been used in production by some people at Netflix and things like that. So it's, it does get used by some people here and there, and, and quite a few organisations. And it's it's called Honest Profiler because it's designed to be a profile that's more accurate so most existing profilers like say j visual vm it's got a very nice ui easy to connect to easy to very easy to use but has certain biases in the way it collects that sampling information when you're using it as a sampling profiler so it's trying to be a little bit more accurate in in that way and also it's still open source as well cool so any any notes anything you want to other that you want to share about um, Java 9? Any thoughts about Java 9? No. Any thoughts about Java 9? Oh, it's going to be, well... Are you excited about Java 9? <laughs> with the modules? Java um, IT? I'm... Jigsaw. Medium mm. excited. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not jumping out of my seat, I must admit. But no, I know... I know well, it's still early as well. Yeah. So it's There's uh, definitely some people for whom that whole area and that whole set of features is going to be really, really useful. I can totally see there's a lot of people who would value the module system and, and have a lot of use for it. For what I do with Java, personally, I'm probably not the exact target audience. Well, um, not now. For, <laughs> for, for <laughs> it. But, but it's definitely good to see there's a lot of, even aside from the module system, there are a lot of other really good improvements coming along in 9. Just even things like kind of rough corner cases from Java 8 APIs being expanded and improved in streams, collectors, optional. If anyone's listening, actually, we've got uh, a bunch of articles on iteratorlearning.com talking about some of the upcoming Java 9 features around the optional streams, collectors, collection factory methods. Just pu published a blog post today on that topic, actually. Okay. Um, and then there's also things like JShell as well. So there's still, mm -hmm. even if you're not that excited about Jigsaw, which I'll admit, it's not really thing that I personally I but I know I know there are other there are other people <laughs> who do different things to me, that's fine. Um, there's still loads of other goodies in there that it will definitely be an improvement. Okay. Thank you so much for talking and to us about uh, Java eight and the collections. So we Thank really you very appreciate much. it. Thank you. <laughs>